Hi, good morning. Uh, welcome to lecture three of design and analysis and algorithms. So today we're going to be talking about more dividing block algorithms. In uh, particular, we're going to be talking about Karatsuba's algorithm and Strassen's algorithm. Karatsuba's algorithm uh, is not in the book, I think, but Strassen's is, and they're quite similar. First, however, I'd like to start by talking about uh, one of the oldest algorithms. It's not a dividing block algorithm, but it sort of gets us going. It sets the background for that. And it's Euclid's algorithm, which is for finding the greatest common divisor of two integers, a and b. And uh, some of you probably know this algorithm. It's from uh, book seven of the elements from about 300 BCE. And, uh, and it's quite simple. So if you have, let's assume that a, a and b are integers, a is larger, and it's based on the observation that if, uh, if a is larger, well actually, even if not, if c divides, so if c divides a and c divides b, then c divides a mod b. So this, this means divides, um, meaning uh, it is, um, the, if c divides a, a is an integer multiple of c. Um, and mod just means uh, you take a and you divide it by b and you throw away all the integer, uh, you throw away the integer and you look at the remainder. So why is this true? Because if you have you have a and you have b, okay, b, and you have some number of copies of c going to B, then if you look at the copies, if you if you subtract an integer number of copies of B from A, then the remainder must be a multiple of C, because if A was a multiple of C, then you've been subtracting groups of integer, integer multiples of c, then you're left with an integer multiple of c. Okay? So, uh, Euclid, um, so, so let's look at an example. Let's uh, so to make this a bit interesting. Um, let's think of Forty-nine and seven. A equals seventy. B equals forty-nine. And yes, I know they're both multiples of seven, and this is pretty easy. And it's because um, when I, I tried recording this before, and I happened to just to pick to pick an example out of the air, and it happened that the the uh, they were relatively prime, meaning their greatest common divisor was one. Um, so, that's a, so that was not a great example. So what we do, we do, uh, okay, we want to know their greatest common divisor. We say, okay, what is A mod B? Is 70 mod 49? Well, uh, 49 goes into 70 only once, so the remainder is um, 21. So now we say A prime, equals 49, b prime equals 21, and so a prime mod b prime equals, um, well, 21 goes into 49 twice, so the remainder is 7. And then we say, okay, so a double prime is 21, and b double prime is 7, and a double prime mod b double prime 
is zero. So that means seven divides 21, and so seven divides A, 70, and seven divides B, 49. Okay, woo, that was cool. So originally, um, Euclid suggested doing this by repeated subtraction. He didn't talk about mod. So that's kind of slow, right? Because if I give you a thousand and one, if A is equal to a thousand and one and B is equal to two, then you don't want to do 500 subtractions to find out that the, the greatest common divisor is one, the relatively prime. Um, so it's much faster to use mod. Uh, how fast is it? Okay, well, nobody really thought about this. It was, you know, the Euclid's algorithm is from 300 BC. Nobody really thought about this until 1844 when somebody called Lamey, Gabriel Lamey, um, said it takes logarithmic time. Well, to be precise, it takes a logarithmic number of steps. Right? This is each time we go from A to A prime to A double prime, that's a step, right? It takes a logarithmic number of steps. Why is that true? Um, well, what you can observe is that A mod B is always at most, uh, well, actually, I think it's strictly last, half of A. Why? Well, in two cases, B is more than half of A, then well, a mod b is, is a minus b. If b is more than half of a, then a minus b is, is less than half of a. And if b is smaller than, um, than half of a, then you put more copies of b. So notice that uh, a mod b is always at most b. So if b is smaller than half of a, then a mod b is smaller than half of a. Okay? Pretty, pretty easy. Um, so at each step, you're taking the large number and reducing it by at least half. And then you swap the two, you swap the order. So now the, the, the large number mod the small number becomes the, the takes the place of the small number in the next step. So how many how many times do you have to do this? Well, at most of a logarithmic number, okay? So, now I said um, it's a logarithmic number of steps, and I corrected myself because at first I said this takes logarithmic time. Okay. It's worth noting, this was actually sort of the first time somebody cared about how fast the computation was. Okay. So this is, according to Wikipedia, the source of, of all true knowledge, and all false knowledge. Um, this was the, the beginning of complexity theory, which is really, don't tell the rest of the faculty this, but really what computer science is all about. Um, so, why, what's the difference between, if it takes a, a logarithmic number of steps, why doesn't it just take logarithmic time? Well, on a, on a computer, if you're dealing with the log, in, with integers that fit in a machine word, then yes, it's the same thing. So this is a model called the RAM model, where you say, okay, I assume I have my machine words are log n bits, and I can do arithmetic on those in constant time. But for a person, um, it's not that, I mean, if I give you two big numbers, it doesn't take you constant time to tell me what a mod b is. Right? I, so I, in, in, in the false semester, I was able to say, okay, point to somebody and say, what, uh, three, four, five, plus one, two, three. And, and they answered pretty quickly. And I said, okay, what's three, four, five, times one, two, three. And it took them longer. So, we, you would think, okay, adding two n-digit numbers, how long does that take? Well, it doesn't take constant time for a human. Um, multiplying two integer numbers, how long does that take? Well, it seems to take longer. Okay, so let's, let's think about how long this takes. Um, so let's, people last year kept asking me how to write, write other names. Actually, I don't have to do that this year because it'll be in the scribe notes, but this is Euclid. Okay. 
You can lose that. So let's consider, um, how long does it take me to add two immediate numbers? Let's say three, four, five, and one, two, three. Well, five plus three is eight, four plus two is six, three plus one is four. Okay, so in each column, I, I imagine I have a little table in my head that says for each one digit number and each one digit number, what is the sum? Okay. And notice that you start out with it without a carry, and therefore um, here you can get a mostly carry of one. This number is always at most nine. This number is always at most nine. Nine plus nine plus max one for the carry is 18 plus 1, so you get, again, a carry of at most 1, so the, the carry can't build up. So that means I can do this in, in constant, uh, I can do each, if I can do each sum in constant time, this takes me to linear time. So adding two n-digit numbers takes order n time. Now you can speed that up if instead of thinking of this as being base 10, um, okay, well, Let's, let's add something here. Let's add a 2 and let's add a 9 or something. Right, so this is still 4 and now this is 11. So um, instead of thinking of this as a base 10 number, you can think of it as being a base 100 number. And so this is one digit and this is one digit and this is one digit and this is one digit. And then I can speed it up by a factor of 2, because what I'll have, instead of having a table of size 100 in my head, I'll have a table of size 10,000, where for every digit, which is now a number between 0 and 99, and every digit here, I know what the sum is. I can just look it up in the table. But that uses about... Um, squared space in, in the base of the number. Um, and, and so if you, if you say, okay, I'm only going to use a fixed amount of space, well, it's only going to speed things up by a constant factor. Um, okay, so, but yeah, so you can think, okay, so we're, we're, we're starting to get things faster. Um, so let's see, let's do a multiplication. Two, three, four, five. Times nine, one, two, three. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh, this is three times five is fifteen. Try to three times four is twelve. Plus one. Try to three times the, uh, three is nine. Plus one. Um, three times two is six plus 1 is 7. Okay, 2 times 5 is 10, so I've got a 1. 2 times 4 is 8, I've got a 9. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2. Notice the carries can be bigger now, but not too much bigger. Um, so 9 times 4 is 36, so it's a 40, 27, 31, uh, so it's a 3, and we'll fit 18, 21, and then I do 5, 3, 4, 31, uh, 14, 18, 23, 6, 9, 3, 2, 1. And that might be correct, or I might have made a mistake. I don't really care. Um, for this example, it will be correct on the scribe notes. Okay, so how long did that take? Well, for each digit here, for each pair consisting of a digit in the lower number and a digit in the upper number, I did a multiplication. Right? Because I have in my head, I have a little, table, a little times table thing going up from 0 to 9 and 0 to 9. Um, 
So it takes multiplying an n-digit number by an n-digit number and actually doing um, n squared, order n squared, little atomic operations. Okay? And also I'm going to use about n squared space. Okay? So is that the best we can do? Well, it's pretty easy to use less space. Okay? Remember from, from lecture two, I was talking about the map of time, how much time things take, and then you have a separate map of how much space things take. The amount of space you take is bounded in terms of, if, if you don't take too much time, then you can't take too much space, because you don't have time to sort of touch all of the memory addresses you would need to use more space. Um, but what we can do is instead of, instead of working out this row, and then this row, and then this row, and then this row, we can work out times 5 is 15, carry the 1. Okay, way down here, that's, this is the way, we know that these are zeros. And so we just write a 5. And then we erase this. Okay. And now, 3 times 4 is 12, plus a 1 is 13, carry the 1. But now we don't, we don't do this. Now we say 2 times 5 is 10, so this is a 0. And we carry the 1 um, for this one. So now we write that, and we go away. Now it's, uh, wait, it was 3 times 5, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, this is a 0, um, and now we say, okay, 2 times 4 is 8, uh, plus, so this is a 9, because we have a carry, and then 1 times 5 is 5, and this is a 0, so now we sum this, and this is a 4, and then we forget this row. So we can work it out, instead of working this out row, row by row, we can work it out column by column, and we only have to keep one column in mind. We only have to remember one column, and so the output takes linear space. Um, well, it takes 2n space. And the carries are not too bad, because you're only remembering for each of these, positions here, you're remembering uh, your leftmost carry, so that's going to take linear space. Um, and the input takes linear space, so you can do this in quadratic time in linear space instead of quadratic time in quadratic space. So ooh, you can do multiplications a little bit better in case you just have a very small piece of paper or something. Okay, but that's still using quadratic time. Can we do better than quadratic time? Sorry, I was just checking that out at the time. Um, so, you think, I mean, just think about it, like we've been multiplying for thousands of years. Um, basically, you know, okay, you start to add, that's, that's one thing. Um, and then once you can add, you, 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 you multiply. Um, so not an addition, I mean, we can't speed it up too much because you actually have to read the numbers. So, um, but multiplication, can we get it down from quadratic time to something close to linear? Well, closer to linear. And until um, about the 1960s, uh, we thought the answer was no. Okay, so in 1960, a famous Russian mathematician, uh, Kolomorov, gave a seminar, I may be mispronouncing that, but uh, gave a seminar in which he conjectured, he said, no, uh, you can't multiply faster than quadratic time. And there was a 23-year-old uh, student in the seminar who 
whose name was Anatoly Karatsuba. So because people like to see how to write this down, so you can look it up on Wikipedia. So um, Karatsuba, I mean, it'll be in the scribe notes, but just in case you would like to look it up on Wikipedia now, that's how you spell Karatsuba. And Karatsuba went away, and a couple of days later he came back and he said, actually, yes, we can. So he had an algorithm that was faster than, um, than quadratic time. And this shocked Kolagra, and he was really impressed. He was apparently so impressed that, according to Wikipedia, he, um, he went away and wrote up, uh, wrote a paper about this, um, this result and a result by somebody else, and then he submitted the paper, the paper was accepted and published, but he didn't, Kolograf didn't put his name on it, he put the name of Karatsuba and this other guy. And so it was published. And Karatsuba didn't know about the paper until he got a reprint and said, you know, congratulations on your beautiful paper, on your really nice result. Um, he didn't know that Kolograf had, had been so impressed. Um, you can read about that on Wikipedia, like I did last night. Um, I knew the algorithm. I didn't know that story. It may not be true. Um, so let's see Karasuba's algorithm. So this is, a, this is why when I said time, distinguish between time and steps in Euclid's algorithm, it's because a step doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily take you constant time. It does in some models. In, in the RAM, if you're working on a computer and your machine words are big enough, then it does. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna think of, we want to multiply x times y, and these are two numbers in base b. Okay, so for us, b is 10. Okay? Um, so these are two n-digit numbers in base b. Um, so what we're going to say is, let's suppose that n is 2 times m. This is going to be, um, well, okay, we say x equals x1 times b to the m plus x is 0, and y equals y1 times b to the m plus y0. Okay. So the example of mine is um, x equals 2, 7, 4, Y equals seven six one four four nine two six. So x zero, sorry, x one equals two seven four nine. And x zero equals eight five one three. And y one equals seven six one four. And y zero equals Four nine two six. B is equal to ten. And um, da, 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 yeah, and M is equal to four. Okay. So, um, so you say okay. Z is equal to x times y. So how you can write this? is z equals z2 times uh, b to the 2m plus z1 times b to the m plus z0, where z2 equals uh, x1 times y1, z1 equals x1 times y0 plus um, y1 times 
times x, no, sorry, let's, let's keep this one, right? x0 times y1, and z0 equals x0 times y0. Okay, so, uh, if, go back to me, if, if we're going to do this multiplication normally, it's going to take like order m squared time, so order uh, 4m squared. Now, here, these are now m bit, sorry, not m bit, m digit numbers. So this is one multiplication of two number of two m digit numbers. So remember, this is going to take 4m squared. And here we have two multiplications, and here we have another one. So now we have four multiplications of um, m digit numbers, so it's 4m squared. So, okay, so far we haven't done anything. Um, oh, so why, why was this true? Well, this was because it's, uh, this is, um, uh, yeah, this is, um, well, this is clearly, um, x uh, 1 times b <clears throat> to the m plus x 0 uh, y 1 times b to the m plus y 0 uh, and this, this is x 1 y 1 b to the 2 m plus and then you do this multiplication you expand out and you get x 1 times y0 and x0 times y1 times bm and then x0 times y1. Okay, so that's this is high school math. Okay. So um, so far we haven't saved any time. Karatsuba's insight is that you can actually say, okay, but Z1 is also equal to, and I should be able to get the number of this. This is x1 plus x0 times y1 plus y0 minus z2 minus z0. Okay? Now, why? Now, let's just check this. This is x1 times y1. plus x1 times y0 plus x0 times y1 plus x0 times y0 minus z2, which is x1 y1 minus z0, which is x0 y0. So x1 y1, this cancels, x0, y0, this cancels, and you're left with x1, y0 plus x0, y1, which is what we want. Why is this good? Well, because now we have an addition, which takes linear time, we have another addition, which takes linear time, we have a multiplication, which is one multiplication, and then we have two subtractions, which are like addition, they take linear time. So now, instead of doing one, two, three, four multiplications, we're going to do one, two, three, and some additions and subtractions. Okay? So that, if we then do these, uh, we do the multiplication, so we do, we, we reduce the number of multiplications in one step, but then we do everything else the same. It's not going to save us very much. The trick is, of course, we're going to do this recursively. So, just to be sure that everybody sees how this happens, let's, let's do um, this example. So this is a video, so I can erase this and it won't get lost. Um, why am I using blue today? Uh -oh. Let's have lots 
else's space. So we have x1, y1, x0, y0. So z2 equals 2, 7, 4, 9 times 7, 6, 1, 4. So recursively, we get x1 prime equals 27, x0 prime equals 49, because I'm recursive, so I'm putting a prime on it. Um, y1, yeah, you can see this, y1 prime equals 76, and y0 prime equals 14, so we get z2 prime equals 27 times 76, and then you can recurse further until you get down to one digit number times one digit number, and you do that in the um, But I'm not going to do that, recur I'm not going to recurse down that far. Uh, this is 2052. By the way, I should say, because this confused some people in, in, in the fall semester, when I say recursion, you're allowed to, so Karatsuba's algorithm is not that efficient for small numbers, where small is, is actually quite big. Um, it's only asymptotically faster. So that means you can go down until you get to a number that's small enough that it's just faster to, to do it by the, the standard technique, and then you can do it by the standard technique. So, saying it's a recursive algorithm doesn't mean you have to recurse all the way down. So, yeah, at this point, you could do it recursively, or you can just... Uh, Z0 prime is 49 times 14, and that's 686. And so you get Z1 prime is 27 plus 49 times 76 plus 14 minus 2052 minus 686. You do this recursively, and it all comes out to 4,000. You can do it recursively, or you can choose not to, and it comes out to 4,102. So therefore, Z2 is equal to uh, 2,052 times 10 to the 4 plus 4,102 times 10 to the 2 plus 686. Um, this is 2093086. Okay. And now we do, we work out Z0. Z0 equals 8513 times 4926. Why is it this? because it's x0 times y0, okay? So this you get um, x1 double prime is equal to 85, and x0 double prime is equal to 13. Okay, 85, 13, y1 double prime is equal to 49, and y0 double prime is equal to 26. So now you got z2 double prime is equal to 85 times 49, which is 4,165. Uh, Z0 double prime is 13 times 26, which is 338. Um, and Z1 
double prime is equal to 85 plus 13 times 49 plus 26 minus 4,165 minus 338. And this is equal to 2,847. And then we get into the complicated stuff. Uh, so let's just put that this is So if we actually have to say what z0 is, so z0, let's do that up here, z0 equals <coughs> um, 4,165, this number, times 10 to the 4, um, plus 2847, this number times 10 to the 2 plus 338 is equal to um, 0, Didn't sleep enough. Um, so this is now uh, 11, 2, 6, 2 times 12, 5, 4, 0 minus Z2 minus Z0. Stuff. Um, and now, how do you do this? Well, you do it recursively, where you say, okay, x1, triple prime. But these, actually, they're, they're five-digit numbers. So now I'm going to take, when I recurse, I can't cut them evenly into, except I can because I find it with a zero. So it's zero, one, one. And then x0 prime, triple prime, is two, six, two. And y1 triple prime is 0, 1, 2, and y0 triple prime is 5, 4, 0. And so you get z2 equals 0, 1, 1, dot 0, 1, 2 equals 132, and z0 triple prime is, okay, 
have for you is 141480 and Z1 is 11 plus 262 times 12 plus 540 minus 132 minus 141480. This is 9,084. Um, and so you get um, this number is Z2, which is 132. Z1 is 132 times 10 to the 6 plus 9084 times 10 to the 3 plus um, to do the first time, you have to subtract Z um, So therefore, oh, Z is equal to 209, 308, time, eight, 6 times 10 to the 8, plus 7, 8, 3, 5, 9, 5, 5, 6, times 10 to the 4, plus 4, 1, 9, 3, 5, 0, 3, 8, which, if you ask Google, it will just tell you 2.09387. Plus 15, so it gives it to you in scientific notation, and so you can't actually tell exactly what this is, but um, you can tell that you have the right answer because if you put this, this formula minus this product, uh, uh, this number times this number, then it gives you back zero. So you can get the right answer. So Karatsuba's formula is correct. Okay, so, good, 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 ow! Um, don't worry, if you're the scribes, I will take a picture of my notes and send it to you. Um, so, well, that was 45 minutes. Um, okay, I might go on a little bit longer this time. So, why do... Um, okay, so uh, Karatsuba got it, so let's do the analysis of Karatsuba's algorithm. So how long, what is the time it takes 
to multiply two indigit numbers. No, actually, let's stop, and then I'm going to start again and do the 